and then uh, and then the floor will be yours. So uh, thank you for coming to today's uh, lecture on nonlinear nonlinear aspects of clouds and their formation. And we have Professor Von Phillips from the Department of Meteorology at Lund University. Um, the reason why I wanted to invite uh, Vaughn here for this presentation is because uh, I've been collaborating in the field of bioacoustics for a very long time, and one thing that bioacoustics does when they're classifying different call signals from humans or from monkeys or from birds is that they classify the sounds into these um, uh, nonlinear uh, categories. And the basic way that that works is that we have a class of sound that's organized in a certain way, and, and Vaughn will talk about that. Things like limit cycles, subharmonics, or folded limit cycles, um, all the way to tori and, and chaos. And in between each of these different states, you can transition, and those transitions are called, in, in the scientific world, bifurcations. And this is something I've been doing for over 20 years working with people on bioacoustics. Um, so uh, particularly for you, Felicita, this could be interesting because mm -hmm. people who are doing voice science also classify the phenomena into nonlinear non phenomena. And when I met Vaughn, we were talking about this aspect of nonlinearity, and the reason why that came up as a topic was because the first people to, to deal with nonlinear phenomena in natural phenomena were people dealing with this climate science, or amongst the first people. And so this is a really a natural, it's kind of a coming home, at least in our little world here. So I really appreciate you coming, Vaughn, and, and I'm looking forward to, to your discussion. So let's give him a big hand. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> uh, thank you for inviting me to talk. Um, and. Uh, Yes, non-linearity non is at the uh, core of atmospheric science. I'm, I'm a scientist, but I'm hoping that some of these ideas that I'll talk about today, about chaos, non-linearity, will have some inspirational value to um, your work in music. And I'll show some examples of the um, attractors and other phenomena that Mike was just talking about. Um, so first of all, um, I'll um, say a few words about um, basic concepts. I'll define what is meant by nonlinearity. Often these terms are used um, freely without awareness for exactly what the definitions are. So I'll go through some of the definitions of nonlinearity, attractors, chaos, and so forth. And then I'll show instances of um, nonlinearity in nature, in, in the atmosphere. I'll talk about atmospheric waves. And <coughs> I'll um, give some examples of different types of attractors. And I'll show some, um, some results from a recent theory that I published earlier this year about uh, how cloud microphysical systems um, have chaos and realms of stability, realms of instability. So... Um, <coughs> so nonlinearity is defined mathematically. Um, um, a system um, has an input and an output. When the input is changed, then the output will change in a, in a way that's not proportional to the input. We say a non, in a nonlinear way. Um, and, and then we have a nonlinear system. 
And very, very typically this happens when there are internal feedbacks in the system. Somehow the output affects whatever the quantity is from the input, which affects the output. Um, <coughs> so feedbacks can be positive or negative. Could I, could I make a brief? So in voice, we have two parts of the system that are nonlinear, uh, non-proportional systems. So you, from the power, which is the air, mm -hmm. which is funneled into the vocal folds to, to produce the ah sound, right? Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a hugely nonlinear function. And then at the top end of the vocal folds, when they produce those little ugly squawks into the resonator, yeah. uh, is the second part that is also nonlinear. And then at the end, of course, there's the feedback system loop from the lips back into, back into the resonator. Mm -hmm. So Fascinating. That's, that's something that relates directly to what. what yeah. Yeah. And I think <coughs> I think dynamical systems generally in nature, whether they're biological or non-biological, they will have some feedbacks. Mm -hmm. So something, everything is interconnected with inside a system that has any complexity. Um, so in, in mathematics, we, uh, we can define an equation as being nonlinear if, um, if it cannot be written as a linear combination of its own input variables. Um, and typically what this means is that um, the equation must have some higher power of the input. Um, so this is a nonlinear equation because we have x to the power of something bigger than one. But this is so this is nonlinear, and this is linear. So this is a nonlinear equation, but this I think would be linear. Um, so dynamical systems in nature are usually nonlinear, um, and there are various properties of nonlinear systems. Um, chaos is one possible property. Um, so chaos means that there's a sensitivity to initial conditions um, as the system evolves through time such that um, the system becomes unpredictable at long times. Um, so the atmosphere is one example of a chaotic system. Um, and the, the, the chaotic nature of the atmosphere is the reason why it's impossible to predict the weather more than one or two weeks in advance, something like that. <coughs> um, another feature of chaotic systems is that there's a, a non-periodicity. So he here I have an example of a chaotic system. had a transfer from the PCs to the Mac, mm -hmm. so it's not really the, the file. Do you know which which um, which uh, player you were using um, on the PC? It's probably MP4 or something like this, huh? I can't remember. Anyway, whatever. Um, You know Maybe what you could do? I could you could just play from your computer just just on the yeah. computer without, mm -hmm. without, without projecting it. Mm -hmm. No, no, without projecting. You can just turn it around and show us on from the laptop. No, no, no. Yeah. That, yeah.
So here is uh, an example of a chaotic system. So this is a this is a pendulum which has got um, uh, a joint. It's two. It's actually two pen pendulums, one oh, attached to the other. And you see that uh, yeah. it's very messy and unpredictable. And the the frequency varies all the time. Yes. There it goes again. Yeah. Um, anyway. So in the theory of, of nonlinear phenomena, they often talk about chaos being unpredictable within a defined space. Yeah. A controlled space or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you want to, is that important to you or, or not really? Yeah. Um, yeah. That so often the system will be stable, mm -hmm. unstable, chaotic or non-chaotic in different parts of its yeah. base space. But, but that thing about being within a, a defined space, mm -hmm. I, I guess the importance of that is just because it's what you're looking at, right? Mm -hmm. It's the phenomenon you're looking at and it's within a certain yeah. a certain area. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, then you'd be looking at something else, I, I guess. Yeah. Is that the idea? Or? Sort of, yeah. The, <coughs> I mean, there's, there's different differing degrees of um, sensitivity to initial conditions in different yeah. parts of the... Phase space, mm. but the attractor will be where there's more you know, predictability in the location. Mm. But um, an attractor can have a fractal quality as well. So yeah, sure. it can. Well, I mean, everything will be basically predictable except for chaos. Right, a torus is completely predictable. Hmm. Yeah, the I mean, there's order in the chaos. You yeah. know that the system will be attracted to some part of some set of points in the, in the yeah. system. Um, so, are you using uh, as a, an equivalent the words chaos and nonlinear? No. Huh? Um, almost, but ah, because so the way that I sorry. The way that I've learned about um, uh, nonlinear systems is that chaos is the fifth attractor state, and that before that there are other attractor states that often lead to chaos. Mm. Um, um. But but for you in, in climate science, mm. then chaos is nearly the same thing as nonlinear nonlinearity. Or um, yeah, I mean. Uh, I mean, the, I mean, I mean, chaos means sensitivity to initial conditions and un unpredictability. Um, I mean, some I mean, nonlinear systems are unpredictable. They're unpredictable because of that nonlinearity. So. Right. Um, and the way that we learned about it in bioacoustics is mm. that the, the unpredictability are those bifurcations between the five or six different attractor states that are listed mm. in the literature. Does that make sense? Um, so it's the bifurcations that are the, the unpredictability until you get to chaos, which is mm. by its nature unpredictable. Yeah. Um, Sort of, oh. sort of. You, yeah, I mean, bifurcations are a manifestation of unpredictability. They increase un unpredictability. Uh, the way that we learn about uh, bifurcations is that uh, they're unpredictable because one or more of the parameters have been weighted in a certain way that have them jump to the other attractor state. Mm. So, uh, a slight... Yeah. Um, I mean, um, there, there are differing degrees of chaos, differing degrees of unpredictability. 
In fact, you can you can measure the degree of unpredictability or chaos from uh, mathematically by what's called the Lyapunov exponent, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is so. So you so even a system that has no bifurcations and only if it only has one attractor, it can be um, sensitive to the initial conditions. So, if, for example, if you have if you have two parcels of air that start off at slightly different locations, yeah. as time progresses, they will go on uh, yeah. differing, differing, increasingly different trajectories. But they don't actually have to suddenly jump to some new meteorological state. Yeah. So it, it, it can it can happen gradually as well. Yeah, I think probably I'm getting in the way of your presentation, because um, uh, Lawrence, who was one of the early people to deal with nonlinear mm -hmm. dynamical systems, mm -hmm. was a weather person, right? Yeah. And so uh, he talked about different attractor states, but but perhaps that isn't really kind of part of how you're dealing with with the research uh, in, uh, mm. in climate science nowadays because it's quite an old idea, you know. Yeah, um, well, um, well, we do, um, so when you we, do, we do communicate with Lawrence's theory. Yeah. Well, when I was a postdoc, Lawrence himself came to Ooh. the lab where I was working at Princeton and he, he gave a talk. Um, and uh, every, everybody attended. Wow! Um, but and he had been doing he had been doing quite a lot of innovative work until yeah, that absolutely. that late stage. Um, yeah. wow. um, I mean, I think I think ideas from chaos theory should come more into meteorology. And so, but people have been making advances by taking uh, ideas from statistical physics or from chaos theory and bringing them in to meteorology. Um, and Le Lyapunov exponents are something I'm, I'm trying, that's my, my next um, thing on the agenda for my research. Oh, okay. um, so, do you want to explain that what that is for me? Or you can do it better than I can. I'll, I'll get on to... Okay, 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 sorry, I'll sorry. Get on sorry. So, so nonlinear systems have um, these properties. Um, they're f often they they're nonlinear because they they involve feedbacks physically, um, and the feedbacks allow oscillations to happen. Um, so, so self oscillations can can be non periodic, as we saw with the double pendulum. Um, another feature of nonlinear systems, it, like the atmosphere, is that there are there are interactions between many spatial scales. So energy goes from one spatial scale to a completely different spatial scale. Um, so, for example, um, uh, surface waves on the ocean um, can uh, transfer the energy to, to much bigger waves. So there can be very big freak waves now and again. And so non-linear non um, wave dynamics explain this kind of thing. Um, so there's some mysterious things about waves that still are not fully understood. Um, there can be multiple equilibria, um, and you see that with the Lorentz. This is the Lorentz attractor. Right, that's called a torus. Um, possibly. Yeah. yeah th there's an attractor, and there's an attractor. So you have two equilibria. So the attractor is a stable equilibrium. So if you start the system right at the attractor, it just stays there. Um, so could, I, could I just mention one thing about the picture? Well, so the idea behind this is that you have two independent frequency contours within the same system. So that's the whole idea between the left and right. Okay, sorry. Interesting. So, so, uh, so it's a there's, a different, there's a different intrinsic resonant frequency, different 
time for all this energy. They should be independent in some way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amplitude, frequency, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, limit cycles are another example of property. Um, so they, um, so a system can go in a loop indefinitely. Um, so why would it be a flutter of an airfoil? An um, airfoil well like on an airplane or? Yeah, yeah if you, okay. um, or if you put anything in a constant airflow, it, it'll flutter. Uh, if you put a flag or if you put a, yeah. a, a rigid yeah. thing that can move, and it will, if you have constant wind, yeah. then the flutter will have a constant uh, cycle. So okay. it's, 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 it's an example of a limit cycle. So a limit cycle is, is nearly periodic motion. But what's an airfoil then? That's a part of an airplane, the, the wing, no? Or what's the airfoil? Um, yeah, it could be an aerofoil. Like if, if you fly, if one flies by, um, um, I don't know, uh, Ryanair, um, the yeah. <laughs> okay, that's another story. Um, but I, I guess I don't know what airfoil means in this case. What 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 airfoil refers to? Um, I think I, I, um, it, it, so. It's it's anything that's aerody aerodynamic. You know, a wing is an aerofoil. Yeah. It's it's shaped. It's shaped um, with a curve. Yeah. For lift, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aero aero aero. I think it should be A E R O. Um, so, um, so in the atmosphere, um, this something striking is turbulence. So fluids have um, the possibility of becoming turbulent. Um, <coughs> Turbulence is defined as chaotic changes with time of the dynamical state, pressure and velo velocity. Um, and when there is turbulence, um, even though there may be some damping of motions, the kinetic energy is enough to overcome that. Um, <coughs> and kinetic energy in one part of the fluid causes kinetic energy um, elsewhere. Um, and sh turbulence consists of eddies um, on all spatial scales down to some, some minimum size. Could, could I? Um, so viscosity re refers to kind of like a damping effect on something. Mm. And so that's why kinetic energy, that's why it's an important phrase because you have this inherent damping on the system. Mm. But, but in some cases, in in, in many cases, right, mm. the kinetic energy overcomes that, that yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so if, if the kinetic energy is below a certain threshold, then yeah. it all disappears. But above a certain threshold, um, the, the kinetic energy can migrate through uh, or be transferred throughout the fluid in terms of the motions of these vortices. Um, and with, with turbulence, there's this um, transfer of energy between spatial scales. So vortices, or vortices that are big mm. will trigger vortices that are small. Yeah. Or they may trigger vortices that are even bigger. Um, and and so fluids have this curious um, bifurcation possibility, yeah. to, to use your word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when, when the lamina flow gets to a certain threshold, um, then chaos begins. Um, lamina means smooth. Yes. So you see this, you see both states of the fluid here. Yeah. So this is a candle um, and the flow is laminar. I think the flow is accelerating during ascent because of the buoyancy of the air from the candle. This is all air, this is a candle. 
and when the kinetic energy reaches a critical threshold mm -hmm. you have turbulence and very suddenly the flow goes from being laminar to being turbulent yes. mm -hmm. and we and that's because of the damping because of the viscosity um yes yes is and it also that it loses power as you go further away from the, from the flame or or no um or the viscosity rises in proportion to the kinetic energy from the flame no the the viscosity is con more or less constant oh, okay. but what's changing is the kinetic energy so so the so the flame is hot yeah it makes the air buoyant, yeah. mm -hmm. but the, the, the buoyancy is a force, yeah. so it takes time for the air to be accelerated. <laughs> so the air is rising slowly here, even right. though it's hot, but then it speeds up and speeds up and speeds up. And if you look carefully, maybe you can see that the flow narrows a little bit. So what's happening is the, there's an acceleration. And when the kinetic e energy gets to a critical level, um, there's chaos. Uh -huh. So it has to do with speed, it has to do with the narrowing, like the funneling of something? Yeah. Does it all, and vis viscosity also, or not really? Yeah, it, viscosity, yeah. Um, so, so you, you can predict exactly where the chaos will start, the turbulence will start here. If you consider the Reynolds number, oh, yeah, yeah. so the Reynolds number is the velocity times the uh, width of of the jet, or, the, or if there's maybe if there's an obstacle, the width of the obstacle divided by the viscosity. So, <coughs> so, so all the way up here, v. The velocity is increasing, so the Reynolds number is increasing, increasing until it gets to the, the threshold at which turbulence happens. And for the atmosphere, we know um, the critical Reynolds number for the onset of chaos. Uh, so we, it's something like a thousand, or, um, but it, um, so. If so if you calculate this, if you estimate what the Reynolds number is in the atmosphere outside, um, V perhaps is 10 meters per second, maybe one or two kilometers up in the atmosphere. L is huge, um, maybe. <laughs> L is the, the width of the flow of the atmosphere so up there, oh, yeah. L would be perhaps something like the depth, half the depth of the troposphere, maybe. Uh, let's say 5,000 meters. 10 meters per second, 5,000 meters, divide by mu. Um, and I can't remember what mu is, something like something quite small, but this number comes up to be about 10 to the power 7, 10 million. And the, crit the, cr the critical Reynolds number is maybe a thousand. So the atmosphere is um, always turbulent in the turbulent region. Um, so the, uh, there are eddies all the time in the atmosphere that are turbulent. Um, even even when there's no wind, no human power devices. A very calm area will still have a lot of turbulence in it. Um, well, um, the, the the energy of the turbulence has to come from somewhere. So if there's no if there's no energy, then yeah. well, I guess. <laughs> uh, so yeah, if, if if there's just a still day, yeah. then V will be very small. Um, so the Reynolds number, the Reynolds number will be small if conditions are very still. So, um, so turbulence, um, 
distinguishes some clouds. Uh, <coughs> so we have three cloud types in the atmosphere, um, most broadly. Most, so we have convective clouds that are powered by the buoyancy force. So when air is warm, it rises because it's positively buoyant. Um, convective clouds are turbulent. They're relatively narrow. They have fast vertical motions. We also have layer clouds, the stratiform cloud, which is caused by just large-scale ascent in the atmosphere. We have we have cirriform clouds. That's the same, except it ha has ice in it. And here's a photo of a convective cloud. So because convective clouds are narrow, relatively, you, you can see them in their entirety, yeah. if you're lucky. So this is a thunderstorm viewed from a distance. Um, so you know it's a thunderstorm because the top is very high and very flat. And you can see it's very dark below because of the rain, intense rain. So convective clouds have vertical velocities bigger than one meter per second, intense rainfall, intense radar reflectivity, um, large precipitation particles, hail for example. Um, and the deepest convective clouds are, are as deep as the troposphere. So this is the top of the troposphere. So stratiform clouds are the opposite and so one example is when there's a snowfall in winter so snow will fall um, from nimbostratus cloud usually <coughs> so now um, <coughs> I'll say a few words about waves in the atmosphere um, so this, this is quite sort of relevant to music. Um, but w waves um, are fundamental in meteorology as well. Um, so a wave is an, an oscillation that propagates through space and time due to the oscillations of individual elements making up the medium. So each element is not propagating, but its movement excites movement in adjacent elements and so forth. And there are three basic quantities, properties of a wave. There's the amplitude, the wavelength, and the frequency. Um, and something um, striking about waves in, in nature is that they have a characteristic time period or characteristic frequency. It doesn't really matter what the amplitude is. Um, so in meteorology generally we, we have about five types of wave in the atmosphere. Um, Sound, I'm sorry to say this, <laughs> but for, for meteorologists, um, sound waves are a pain <laughs> because they wreck, they wreck our weather forecasts. And um, I think the very earliest weather forecast failed because there are, there are actually sound waves in the simulation that <coughs> uh, made noise build up and, and the, the forecast crashed. But very soon people worked out a way of filtering sound waves. So I, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but people, um, people wanted good weather forecasts. So, so there are gravity waves that are fundamental to clouds. Um, gravity waves are also important for the climate. Um, but the most important waves for um, the weather conditions are baroclinic waves or Rossby waves. Um, so these two waves are quite closely connected. <coughs> so the gravity wave is created by what's called the buoyancy force. Um, 
the Rossby waves are created by the Coriolis force. The Coriolis force acts effectively horizontally. Oh, well, you, can you tell? Can you give us a deeper? So, w w it's horizontal, and what about it? Um, well, what's special about the Rossby? So the Rossby wave um, <coughs> propagates <coughs> um, fairly fairly fast because it's a very large wave. Oh. So the so Rossby waves are um, thousands, many thousands of kilometers wide Whoa. or long in terms of their wavelength. Um, the, because the Coriolis force is a fairly weak force, um, the Coriolis force um, is important on big spatial scales um, and big time scales. So it's a, so it's a, uh, it's a relatively weak force compared to forces we're familiar with, but it, but it becomes appreciable over long time scales. So, so a parcel of air moving around the globe following the mean flow from west to east, it can, it will experience the Coriolis force um, uh, to the right of the motion of the, in the northern hemisphere. And usually there's a, a, pressure, a pressure gradient force balancing it. Um, so it goes in the opposite direction. And so if there's an imbalance between the Coriolis force and the pressure gradient force, there'll be a, a sort of circular motion. Um, so the, the Coriolis force varies with latitude. So if, if, if you take the parcel and move it to a different latitude slightly, there'll be an imbalance of between the Coriolis force and the pressure gradient force, which will tend to cause an oscillation. The parcels will oscillate around the latitude, the, the, the initial latitude. So, so the Coriolis force um, acts to the right of the motion in, in the northern hemisphere. And so, so the Coriolis force always tends to create circular motions. So the Rossby wave sort of consists of so circular, uh, circular-like um, oscillations. And baroclinic waves are caused by um, horizontal temperature gradients uh, that create a sort of density contrast horizontally. And so baroclinic waves will involve ascent and due to the the buoyancy force from that contrast, and there's, there's vortex stretching. Um, so similar to amplitude and sound, or is that more? Um, if you have an increase of mass or whatever, yeah. Because that's. Um, I don't know. Um, the yeah, sound involves just uh, the pressure force. Um, so, so these waves, uh, these waves, these waves are, um, I think, transverse. I think. So, sound is sound involves the pressure force acting in the direction of propagation. But I think with these waves, the force is acting. Perpendicular. Perpendicular. So, 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 so these waves are more complex. Okay. Mm -hmm. And does something cause these waves, or? Yeah. The uh, so. Um, so there's energy energy arriving all the time in the climate system from the sun, and then that's converted to um, long wave energy. Heat, there's thermal heating. And there's uh, evaporation of water, so the, so water condenses in storms, and then there's latent heat 
so from condensation, and that that uh, so so one wave continually causes another wave. Which so there's a there's a continual sort of cascade of energy among Ruski waves. So if we didn't have a planet that moved, if we didn't have a planet that rotated, yeah. then we wouldn't have those waves. Um, Uh, n not in the form we know them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. but will we have them but at all? Well, because I'm trying to think. Cause so well, I'm locked into this idea of a wave being caused by something, mm. and maybe that's the wrong concept. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I mean, a wave has to get its energy from something. Yeah, right. So that's like or turbulence, or yeah. something. there has to be some um, yeah. stirring of a fluid in okay. order for there to be turbulence. Or the, the these waves get the energy from the sun ultimately. Yeah. It's like the sun. So the sun causes evaporation of water, it causes long wave heating uh, and um, so, so, so many systems of clouds cause um, horizontal motions that then d dis excite these waves. What about the furthest out planets in our in our solar system? Mm. What about the ones out past Pluto? Do they rotate? Do you know? Mm. Does Jupiter, Venus, do they rotate? Um, yeah, um, I think they all do. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess so. Yeah. Even the stuff alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think there are these waves. You can see manifestations of them on on the surface of Jupiter. Okay. Um, um, okay. Is it? Yeah. Who's Rossby? Who's mm. Rossby? Uh, well, he he was. Um, I think he was a, a Scandinavian meteorologist from. The beginning of the last the last century, in the around the 1900, something like that. So he was and the guy to document this. Yeah, he he discovered um, Rossby waves. Um, well, the Scandinavians sort of um, did a lot of progress in meteorology. Um, so, 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 so there was a whole school of people like him in, in Scandinavia: Rossby, Findison, Bergman. Around about a hundred years ago, and they s they started the the first sort of network of ob observing stations that was then used to predict the weather. So, so meteorology sort of restarted in uh, in Scandinavia. So so um, so if you fly on an aircraft, um, this is quite a familiar sight. So you should always uh, get a window seat when you, you fly on an aircraft and then you can look down and you, s you see patterns in the cloud in the, in the boundary layer. So in, in the lowest kilometer above the ground we have what's called the boundary layer where moisture is trapped, where there's a lot of turbulence. and. Um, typically, there's cloud at the top of the boundary layer. It's just a ver very thin amount of cl cloud, um, and as the air moves over the land, um, there will be um, obstacles that trigger gravity waves. And you see that the the waves show up in patterns of the cloud. Um, so in this picture, which way is the wind moving? Um, <laughs> um, is it moving left to right, or right to left, or is um, or the different? Difficult, I mean, difficult to say. Because because it can go like this, right? It can cross. Um, well, also it's different streams. So it's yeah, it's impossible to say. Really. Would would it, would it be going like this? One going like this, and then another one going like this, or no? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean there can be waves going in all sorts of directions. Um, but um, 
so so there's so let me unpack the different ideas so let's say so cloud formation um, relies on ascent so um, so any cloud is just um, condensate that's appeared and usually the condensate only appears if there's some ascent because as, as air rises it, it cools and the cooling creates the saturation that creates the condensation so when you look at these lines of the clouds, what you're looking at is uh, lines of ascent. So, so all these parallel lines of clouds are in fact parallel lines of ascent. Uh, so, so here's a cartoon. That Jesus. So the so here's an obstacle, the air is going this way, and um, if I'm a parcel of air, I, 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 so I just go with the flow. Um, well, you do play violins. So, yeah. <laughs> string players always go, go with the flow. And we, oh, so that's the string theory. Right? And so, yeah, um, so the... But, but if, if I am a, a parcel of air, I have a sort of, um, what's the word, characteristic frequency of oscillation. So I will, I will, want, I will go up and down with a certain time period. Yeah. So if, if the kick that is given to me sort of roughly coincides with my natural time period of going up and down, then there'll be some resonance, and uh, I'll keep on going up and down at, at that same frequency. Um, and so, if I go up and down like this, um, because fluids are continuous, I will excite all my colleagues oh to yeah. go up and down in a similar way. Yeah. But what what's interesting when you look at this, you see that the Although the flow is going this way, the, um, the there's a there's a sort of a slope of the peaks of the waves. Um, so energy somehow is going upstream a little bit, um, and you see that um, there can be eddies near the ground excited by these these waves. Um, so gravity waves um, can have uh, wave breaking. There can be turbulence. Um. Can I ask a simple question? Yeah. Uh, so if the wave is moving from left to right on the picture here, yeah. the resonance system, the air particles are kind of like it's it's densely or more loosely packed, and so they're they're basically going like this, right, and bumping into the next one, and then bumping into the next one. The, the resonant, uh, the resonance of this this area, uh, while the air flows through it. Is that correct? Um. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. And then, how high up okay. can you talk about resonance? Like, could it be? It could be many kilometers up um, and so, th so there's a, cru a crucial detail here which is that the um, so what what's causing me to uh, oscillate up and down is my buoyancy so so I become more buoyant than the surrounding air when I'm going when I'm lower than usual and that accelerates me upwards. But when I'm higher than usual, I become less buoyant in the surroundings. And so, so even though I'm going up, I'm negatively buoyant, and eventually I just go back down again. So there's this um, um, interplay between temperature, my temperature, and my speed. And you can quantify whether there's going to be 
this resonance um, to N is something that characterizes the um, vertical temperature gradient in the environment. So, um, so let's say Z is the altitude of a parcel, and this is the buoyancy force per unit mass of the parcel. The buoyancy force is the upthrust from the surroundings minus the weight of the, of the parcel. So when a parcel is at rest, it's neutrally buoyant. The buoyancy force is zero. So the, the vertical acceleration is just the buoyancy force. And by Archimedes principle, you can write the buoyancy force as this. And then by the ideal gas law, you can write it as this. So if a parcel is anomalously buoyant, so then it will be anomalously warm compared to these surroundings. So this is the surrounding temperature. This is the parcel's temperature. So if a parcel is warmer than the surroundings, a fractional temperature difference times g is just the acceleration. 